What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode. This is episode number 89 and we start today's episode off with our second uh, of three pre-season friendlies uh, before we start competitive football here uh, for our fourth season on this Career Mode. And uh, of course we are away today, we're away in Italy taking on Palermo. Of course in the first pre-season friendly we won by a goal to nil, we beat Mainz, I think it was FSV Mainz 05. Uh, we beat them by a goal to nil, Lee Marshall, one of our youth academy players got the only goal of the game. And uh, in this game where it was the most boring preseason friendly of all time it, uh, it finished nil nil and you know these preseason friendlies don't matter too much I mean you know it would be nice to get some good gameplay just to sort of warm you guys up for the, the regular season but um, even so it was it, they're not really that important but uh, it was such a boring boring game it did finish nil nil and after that we found out that Jake Fodderham uh, one of the first youth players we ever promoted in this series if not the first uh, has been sold to Mansfield Town for about 50 grand so yeah he didn't really develop as well as we were thinking did we but uh, did he but uh, yeah the league objective this year we finally got the uh, league objective from the board and they say they want us to win the league title so we want they want us to win uh, the Premier League they want us to win the FA Cup and they also want us to win the Champions League so those are some pretty realistic aims, right? I mean, you know, I think we could probably do one of those. I mean, we've won the FA Cup already. Uh, we won that last year. I still believe we can challenge for the title this year, but you know, winning the Champions League will be very difficult. And I don't see us winning the treble, really. I mean, it's a, it's a really, really difficult, difficult ask from the board. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really not fancying my chances at completing a treble. And that that's really worrying to me because I can't see the board um, being too happy if we end up with only one trophy after they've laid down some really, really, really tough aims. So we'll wait and see what happens. We will, of course, be going for it. And we're not just going to sit there and say, oh, well, it's not going to happen. We'll still be going for the treble. But... I'm very, very, very annoyed that's what the board wants. because I can't see us doing it. But um, anyway, the first chance in the third preseason friendly game here uh, against Real Madrid came to Real Madrid and Sami Kadira got the goal. It was a good goal by the German and it was a, a little bit frustrating that goal because we gave possession away. It was one of the first chances Real Madrid had and they were 1-0 up here. And uh, the second chance for them came in the 33rd minute. Gareth Bale down the right hand side, chips it inside to Di Maria. Di Maria finds Carvajal and he puts the ball past Alex McCarthy, I think I had, uh, had starting in this game. So, a uh, very, very disappointing goal to concede there. Both goals are actually quite disappointing because they weren't really, you know, uh, fantastic goals. They were just little breaches in our defence and uh, our midfield pushed for, uh, high out of the pitch. So, very, two very disappointing goals to concede there. Real Madrid were 2-0 up here. And in the 62nd minute, what a lovely pass that was to Nathaniel Klein. He's got all the space down the right hand side. Klein fizzes the ball back towards Lee Marshall. Marshall shoots. Good save with the goalkeeper. And how on earth? I think it was Muslera starting goal there, or possibly Diego Lopez. Uh, but even so, how on earth did the goalkeeper claw that off the line before Lukaku could score? That was so, so frustrating. Thought for sure that ball across the line, but it hadn't. And the game did finish 2 0. So it's not really revenge for us knocking them out last year in the Champions League, but at least they uh, won, so they'll be happy with that. But um, I was disappointed to lose that game 2 0. And uh, that's one win, one draw, and one loss for our three preseason friendlies. Uh, the board went and gave us £2 million, I think it was, around £2 million uh, after our additional funds request because I still believe that with all those high aims, we should be getting a bit more money for that. And uh, Liverpool wanted Ravel Morrison for £4.7 million, and I was like, Brendan Rodgers, mate, you must be having a laugh. I know he doesn't play that much, but whenever he does play, he does well. He's a young English talent who I don't want to get rid of. £4.7 million for a player that's valued at £6 million. It's not like he's on the transfer list or anything. I mean, what on earth was that about? But yeah, he's staying. Uh, they don't meet the counter offer, and he's staying. And uh, Vinaldum says, can you give us a new contract? And that's really frustrating because we don't have that much money. Or was it something? Something like that, I don't know. I didn't really get the chance to see. But um, anyway, once again, just like last year, I looked at Chelsea's striker list and they've just got every single striker under the sun. And uh, of course, there are two players in there that I looked at last year as well. Uh, those were Benteke and Traore. We ended up getting Lukaku because he was the cheapest option, but he still did very well. And I did say uh, during the past few episodes, of course, when we were in the Euros with Belgium, of course, we won that tournament, uh, our first national tournament win in the series. Um, I was going to think about trying to pick up Benteke because Benteke and Lukaku had an amazing uh, tournament together. They were such a great strike partnership. So I'm thinking about picking up Benteke. Uh, but I'll also inquire about Lewandowski and Traore as well. But uh, Mourinho says he wants £50 million for Lewandowski. And I was like, well, that's not going to happen, is it? Because we ain't got that much money. And uh, they, uh, Mourinho then says he wants 22 and a half for Traore. Now, Traore was the original striker I wanted before he went to Chelsea at the start of last year. Um, he was at Anzi. We didn't have the money to bring him in. And then Mourinho snatched him from our, uh, from our hands and uh, said, no, 
hope he's my striker now. Um, so yeah, Traore was the striker I originally wanted. So you know, twenty-two and a half million. If we can get it a little bit cheaper than that, then you know, possibly I'd choose Traore over Benteke. But Benteke, uh, Chelsea want twenty-six million pound for Benteke, and uh, to be honest. I would say that I would prefer Benteke over Traore. The reason being is because, you know, I know that he plays well with Lukaku. Of course, we saw that uh, in the Euros. So I know he plays well with Lukaku. And with that in mind, it means that, you know, because Traore would be un untested. We haven't used Traore before. I mean, I know I used him last year and I've used him in Ultimate Team, but I've never used him in FIFA 14 career mode. So, you know, because sometimes you get that, you know, sometimes you get a player that works well in one game mode, but not very well in the other. Um, you know, sometimes you get that. So, you know, maybe Traore wouldn't be that good in career mode. Maybe Benteke would be better. Maybe Benteke wouldn't be that good for us and Traore would be better in career mode. So who knows? But, you know, at least all I know is I've tried Benteke out in career mode and uh, he's been amazing with Lukaku for Belgium. So he is proven as a good striker. So he would be the one I would prefer. But if we can't get him and we have to settle for Traore, then fair enough. Because it looks like we're going to get one of those two strikers because it seems we can afford at least one of those. You know, we can't afford both, sadly, but uh, it looks like we can afford at least one of those strikers. So we'll just have to choose which one we want and uh, wait and see what happens. But uh, anyway, we took on Arsenal for the Community Shield here, the first time uh, playing for the Community Shield here at Wembley. And uh, the first chance of the game came to Lukaku. His shot was well saved. And from the corner, it was crossed in. It was headed away. Came out to Anthony. Anthony flicks it back in towards Lukaku. It's headed away. Comes to Chris Small. And we keep the chance alive here as Arsenal failed to clear up Podolski. It comes to Vlad Kirikez, our centre-back. Skips past the man with a lovely fake shot. Goes down the right-hand side. Crosses the ball. It's a great ball. And it's a free head header for Nathan Redmond. Not really renowned for scoring headers, but uh, it was a free header for Redmond and he wasn't going to miss there. Lovely cross by Kirikez, but uh, the marking was poor. The AI marking on this game is just shambolic regardless of the difficulty. And we are 1-0 up here. And in the 22nd minute, Theo Walcott gets on the ball but gives it away. Comes to Townsend. Townsend plays out wide to Redmond. Redmond plays a great free ball to Anthony. He's got the legs to beat Thomas Marlin here. He's got the legs to keep on going. Goes down the right side, chips it towards the centre of the box, and there is Wijnaldum. And what a volley that was by Wijnaldum. Don't score too many volleys, but uh, that was a lovely, lovely volley, and uh, no chance for Chesney in goal. Lovely run by uh, Anthony as well. Waited and waited and waited before he chips it in, and it was a great volley by Wijnaldum. So 2 0 up here. Arsenal did not play well in the first half, but they did have a good chance to uh, get themselves back in here. But uh, Meza Ozil, uh, well, he's going to be a contender for one of the worst misses of the series. It was a good strike by. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure who it was, but the shot was well saved by Forster. Uh, Meza Ozil with a free shot with about a few yards to go. Open goal. Somehow blazes the ball wide. So still 2-0. Made a double substitution here. Brought on a couple of players. And uh, in the 90th minute here, it was a good chance for the substitutes to link up. Townsend down the left-hand side here. Waits and waits and waits for giving it to Leroy Fur. Third down the left-hand side. Eventually, eventually, eventually crosses the ball in towards Lee Marshall. Can he score? No, he hits the post. That was a great chance for the subs to link up there. But sadly, Marshall couldn't make the most with that header there and it is still 2-0 but uh, straight from the goal kick Chesney gives it to uh, Jenkinson, uh, Jenkinson back to Walcott, Jenkinson back to Koscielny, Arsenal trying to play out from the back as they usually do Jenkinson ends up giving the ball away Lukaku intercepts him, crosses the ball into the far post, there is the substitute Lee Marshall and this time he puts the ball on target with the header and Chesney should have saved it, I mean that that's, uh, you know, well done for getting the header on target but let's be fair, Chesney should have saved that, he didn't and it was 3-0 to us and Lee Marshall continues a very very good Good start to the season for the uh, for the young man, and uh, in the 90th minute, the last chance came to Arsenal, but they failed to get the most of it. <clears throat> The ball went out for a goal kick, and um, yeah, that was that was it basically. That was how the game finished. So a three 0 victory. Uh, we win the Community Shield for the first time, our first trophy of the series. It wasn't on the agenda. It's not what the board wanted. They don't really care about it. They probably didn't even realise we were playing for the Community Shield, but we've won it. So you know, I'll take it. It's the first one of the series, and um, I'm I'm happy with it. It wasn't a difficult game. That was the odd thing about it. You know, I mean, usually in finals, it is quite a difficult game. Of course, you know, just a couple of episodes ago, we had the Euro uh, 2016 final, and that was one of the most difficult finals ever played. We won it on penalties after a 2-2 uh, draw after 120 minutes. And uh, this game was just, it was so easy. I mean, Arsenal barely threatened. You know, had Ozil scored that chance when it was 2-0, possibly it could have been a different second half. But instead, it was very easy and we collect Community Shield, so I'm very happy about it. Uh, Lukaku's not leaving the club. Uh, we've got an offer from him there from Real Madrid for 12 million. We say no, because I don't want to get rid of him. And we get another offer for Lukaku here once again. So he's a striker in hot demand. And it's for Dortmund. And they say 12.5 million. Can we have him please and we say no we're going to keep him because I don't want to sell Lukaku he's only 23 years old 81 overall I think he was third in the top scoring charts last year he's a very decent player and then Chelsea come back to us uh, about Traore and they say 18 million pounds for the giant strike and I was like wow that's 
that's not a bad deal, is it? I mean, that's that's pretty decent. Of course, as I said, I don't know what his overall is. I don't know how good he's going to be on career mode this year. But, you know, he was amazing on the team for us. And £18 million, pounds, that could be an absolute bargain. But I wasn't sure, really, because I'm, I'm still kind of hoping for Benteke. You know, Traore's the sort of the uh, the safety card option. I'm, I'm hoping for Traore, but I still... Uh, sorry, I'm hoping for Benteke, but Traore's the safety card option. We offer £13.5 million pounds plus Icrem, because I'm still not sure if I want to keep him or not. But it doesn't look like it's going to matter, because... Uh, Chelsea accept the deal for Benteke. Uh, we basically spent as much money as we could for him, and uh, we offer him a contract of 120 grand a year. So we'll wait and see what happens there. And um, Chelsea then said about the deal with Traore, it, it wasn't good enough. The, the thing is, I don't mind spending that much for Traore, but now Benteke looks like a guaranteed deal. I mean, I'd only go, in, I'd only accept the Traore deal over Benteke if it means we can offload Icram as well and keep a few million. Because otherwise, I don't want to spend most of my budget on a player that I don't particularly want, where I want someone else. Uh, uh, just because I can offload a player, you know, so I, I don't know. I don't think I'm going to do that. I think we'll probably go with Benteke because the chances are he's going to accept the contract. And with that in mind, I, you know, I want Benteke anyway. So it looks like it's going to be Benteke this year. So this is the squad. This is how I got it set up. A 4-4-2 or a 4 one 2 whatever you want to call it. But a 4-4-2 diamond wide for me. That's how it's set up. And um, yeah, I just imagine that Benteke or Traore are going to fill in that striker position. And Anthony will be dropped to the bench. So Lee Marshall will be a bit of a reserve striker. Which is, you know, not to be um, disappointed about. Because I, I want to play Lee Marshall a bit. But um, he's, he's only like 67, 68 overall. So I'd rather him be a reserve striker really. But um, here's a look at the squad report. And uh, I think that does end the episode off yes it does so uh as always guys uh, oh dear wow i'm messing up my outro aren't i uh, as always guys a big thank you for watching today's video i really hope you have enjoyed it uh if you have please leave a like that's much appreciated and it really does help my channel out and it only takes a second to leave a like and i'll see you for the next episode of career mode tomorrow afternoon